Hey guys, welcome. I wanna show you a really cool way to make your own sequence system. And by this, I literally mean a sequence where you have a list of commands that runs in order. This is gonna come in handy if you're tired of making really long coroutines, or you just wanna be able to keep things neat and easier to manage by having a reorderable list of commands in the inspector. Ready? Let's go. So here's a simple example of what you could use this system for. We interact with the chest and it plays a sound, then it opens and spawns some particles, waits some more, then spawns in a collectible that floats up, starts spinning, and then moves towards us until it is collected. So I find that this comes in the most useful when you're trying to sync up a bunch of particles and sound effects, and you're trying to get the timing of everything to feel just right. Okay, so here is a fresh scene. I have my chest in here, and currently you can see that when we interact with it and it's not already open, if we press the interact button, the chest will open. All that's doing is determining what sprites should be active and which shouldn't, and we're lerping the position of the chest lid up over time, like this. The reason I have to do it this way is because of the chest asset that I'm using for this project. There is a chest closed sprite, which is the whole chest, and then there's a chest open sprite, and a separate chest lid sprite. So when we open the chest, we deactivate this one, activate these two, and move the chest lid up. And by the way, all the art and all the sounds we'll be using in this tutorial are linked down below in the description. So let's get rid of this, because we're going to replace it with our sequencer. Okay, so first, let's create a script called sequencer, and another script called sequencer action. And I'm going to attach my sequencer to my chest here. So the sequencer action is going to act as a base class, so we'll make it abstract. And we're going to be using scriptable objects to hold the actual individual sequence commands, so we'll make this inherit from scriptable object. And this needs to be a public abstract I enumerator because it's a coroutine, which is going to make dealing with time and all that stuff really, really easy. And we're passing in the sequencer where we're actually starting this coroutine from, which will give us the proper instance of the sequencer class, which will make it easy to nab any transforms or references that we might need along the way. And to help us with that, we're going to need an initialize function, which we'll call once in awake in our actual sequencer class. And we'll reference the game object in case we ever want that as well. Okay, now let's handle the sequencer itself. We're going to have a public list of sequencer actions. And just like we said, let's say in awake for each action in our sequence actions list, we'll call the initialize function and pass in a reference to this game object. And let's create a coroutine called execute sequence, which is where we'll actually call all of our sequence actions. So to do that, we'll say for each action in our sequencer actions list, we'll yield return start coroutine and call action.startSequence and pass in this since it wants a sequencer reference. So what this line means is it's gonna run the start sequence coroutine in the first sequencer action. It's gonna wait for it to finish, and then it's gonna run the second, wait for that one to finish, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm just gonna create a public function to make calling this coroutine easier. And now in our chest script, let's get a reference to our sequencer. and we'll call initialize sequence when we actually open the chest. So we haven't done anything yet really because we haven't set up any individual scriptable objects yet. So to do that, we need to create a couple of scripts. Sequencer action sound, sequencer action wait, sequencer action open chest, and sequencer action give treasure. So I'm gonna open sequencer action sound. So we're going to inherit from sequencer action and that's going to give us an error because we need to implement our abstract method. To do that, you can right click, quick actions and refactoring and click implement abstract class. Now this one is simple. We just need a sound to play. We play it. and yield return null because it's a coroutine and you have to yield return something. So this is just gonna wait one frame and then move on to the next sequence. And let's not forget our create asset menu attribute at the top. Okay, so let's do the wait action next. 
So we're starting off the same. We're gonna set it up by inheriting from sequencer action, implementing the method, adding the create asset menu attribute. And this is literally just a wait. So we'll have a float for our wait time and we'll wait by that amount of time. Open chest is next. So let's set it up. Now for this, we're going to need some dust particles and a chest opening sound effect, as well as a reference to our chest. Now to get a reference to our chest, this is why we created that initialize method. And it's also why we made it virtual because that essentially makes it optional. And for this script, we want to use it. So let's override it and get the component from the chest game object. And in the sequence, we'll open the chest, play our chest open sound effect. We're gonna wait half the time that it takes for the chest lid to move upwards and then spawn in our dust particles at the chest open spawn point position with no rotation. The chest open spawn point position is just a transform that I set up and we're setting it in the inspector on our chest like this. Now for the last one, the give treasure. Again, we're gonna set it up. We'll need a few more variables for this one, but it's still not too bad. We need a prefab for the treasure that we're going to spawn in, a sound for the treasure when it spawns in, and a bunch of time variables. How long for the gem to float upwards, how long to wait before it starts spinning, how fast should it spin, how long should it spin for, and at what speed should it move towards the player. And a reference to our chest game object, our gem transform, and our player transform. And again, that's what the initialize function is for. Our chest object will be our chest game object. And our player, we can just search by tag. Okay, so first we want to spawn our gem at the chest position. We can also assign our gem transform reference to that. Let's set up a start position and end position for the gem. And we spawned it at the chest. And we're just moving it up by three. Now to actually move it up, we'll create a float that will iterate. And if it's less than time for upwards movement, well then we'll actually iterate that counter. Create a new vector two that lerps from the start position to the end position. And in order for that to take exactly the amount of time that we want, we divide elapsed time by time for upwards movement. And then actually apply that new position to our gem's local position. And yield return null so that it iterates every frame until it's done. Then we're gonna play the gem sound effect. We'll wait our wait time before spinning. And then we'll start spinning, which again will be based on a timer. So while that timer is less than our time for spinning, we'll increment the timer, create a new quaternion to use, but we'll use quaternion.euler so that we can pass in a vector three. And we want it to spin on the z-axis by spin time multiplied by our spin speed. Then we'll apply that rotation and again, yield return null. And by the way, it's important to know that when our gem hits our player, it plays a sound and then it destroys itself. So based on that logic for our last action, we can just say while our gem transform is not null, we'll move it towards the player by first calculating the direction from the player to the gem normalized and then add that direction to our position multiplied by our speed and time.delta time. And we want it to spin while it's chasing the player as well, so you can just copy and paste our spin code from up here, and again, yield return null. Okay, so that's all the code done. Now, in order to actually make these all work, 
we're going to right click in our project window and create a new sequence. And we're gonna do one for each of them. So in the play sound, we're going to assign our sound effect. For the wait, let's make sure it's waiting for one second. For the open chest, I've got this dust particle prefab, which is pretty basic. And an open door audio clip. Again, a link for the sounds are down below. And actually, we're going to duplicate the wait. And let's make this one two seconds. And finally, for the give treasure, I have this gem prefab here. Again, it just has the power-up script, which plays a sound and then destroys itself when it touches the player. We're just keeping it real simple for the sake of this tutorial. And we'll assign a gem sound. And all of these default values are pretty good. So now you can just assign all those scriptable objects to our sequencer in the inspector, which is really great because if you need to reorganize or add or remove anything, it's really easy to do in the inspector. And now you can see if we interact with our chest, all of those commands are going to run in the order that we set them up in the inspector. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like or a comment if you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next one.